Praise the Lord. On your state, I said, Praise the Lord. It's like I've never, I've not been here for a long time. And I, as I sat over here and looked at your church building, I said that we in Nigeria or America. And I believe. The good thing you have done here. The unity with the leadership. Something good will never stop in your life. And I know that many people are outside the house. The Lord is going to reach you where you are. As our state pastor has told you, tonight is supposed to be our leader's meeting. And normally we speak uh, English, English, English. As a so you bo, you bo, you bo. And uh, but as I saw you tonight, I wish I could talk to you Yoruba myself. <laughs> but tonight. Somebody there, I said tonight. The God of all possibilities will touch your life. Mountains are going to move away. Okay, you see the blow. All our leaders who have been serving the Lord. You have been praying for other people. Preaching to other people. Meeting up other people. Leaders, something new is coming upon your life. All our workers who have been working for the Lord. Your reward is going to be given to you in full. Our members who are becoming faithfully are going to discover signs and wonders in your life. Tonight. All those who are invited, maybe you are coming to deeper life here for the first time. You will drink of the water of life. Tonight you'll eat the bread of life. Something will turn in your life. And uh, get ready. We thank the Lord for the privilege. Even though I'm talking to the leaders. All over the nation of Africa and beyond. What is good for the leaders is good for those who are being led. I will receive. Somebody there, I will receive. Close your eyes, we are going to pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you tonight. We bless your name. We know you are a mighty God. We know you are a great God. Tonight, you are going to do something marvelous, something great, something supernatural, something unforgettable. In every line tonight, in Jesus' name, as the word comes, let the wonders enter into every life. As we read the Bible together, bad sickness from on high will come upon every line tonight, in Jesus' name. Miracles, transformation, power, authority, anointing that breaks every yoke. I pray, Lord, you do it for everyone tonight in Jesus' name. Touch everyone. Turn us around. I pray, Lord, tonight, nobody here will go back home empty and dead in Jesus' name. Confirm each and every life. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, God bless you, you can sit down. As we look at the word of God tonight, I 
that we're talking about the God of all possibilities. I want to remind you that your problem is simple in the sight of God. Your challenges are very simple in the sight of God. Look at Matthew chapter 19. And I'm reading from verse 26. Matthew chapter 19 verse 26. It says, But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Tonight, our God is here. His power is here. His anointing is here. His goodness is here. And tonight, with God, all things are possible. I'm looking at Mark chapter 9. And we're reading from verse 23. Mark chapter 9. We're reading from verse 23. Look at what Jesus said. And Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. You know what the Lord is saying? He's saying if you can believe tonight, all things are possible in your life. As you believe tonight, all things will be done in your life. Since you believe tonight, all things are possible tonight for you. It will save your soul. It will sanctify you. It will fill you with the Holy Ghost. It will heal your sickness. He will deliver you. It will break every yoke in your life. That long-standing problem tonight it's going because you believe all things are possible to him that believeth I'm looking at Luke chapter 1 I'm reading from verse 37 Luke chapter 1 verse 37 for with God nothing shall be impossible maybe the people try to help you they said this is hard this is tough. Maybe you have a problem. A problem in the family. A problem on your job. A problem in your Christian life. You have tried and tried. You have struggled everywhere. And the problem was not solved. Tonight, you are before the God of all possibilities. And because you are the God of all possibilities, with God, nothing shall be impossible. Tonight is your night. What are you there? Tonight is your night. In Matthew chapter 17. Matthew chapter 17. I'm reading from verse 20. Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, certainly I say unto you, assuredly I say unto you, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say to this mountain, be thou removed, hence to yonder place, and it shall remove. Tonight it shall remove. Tonight, it will relocate. Oppression in your life will find their way. Evil powers in your life, they will find their way. All the attacks and all the affliction, they will find their way. And then it says, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Nothing shall be impossible unto, unto you. Say that for yourself. Nothing shall be possible unto, unto you. We're looking at Romans chapter 8. How will this happen? How will the miracle happen in your life tonight? The miracle of forgiveness. The miracle of salvation. The miracle of power. The power that will roll all those challenges away. Romans chapter 8. Reading from verse 32. 
Romans chapter 8 verse 32 He that spared not his own son But delivered him up for us all How shall he not with him also freely give us all things Freely Freely There's no charge Freely There's no struggle Freely There is no human energy He will freely give us All things Underline those words All things in your Bible All things All things I will have all things I receive all things Tonight all my prayers are answered All my needs are met All things waiting for you I receive I receive You have got it 2 Corinthians chapter 9 I'm reading from verse 8 And God is able And God is able Look at that challenge in your life God is able Look at that difficulty in your life God is able And God is able to make All grace abound toward you That she always have all sufficiency in all things May abound to every good work You'll find in that verse again All things Always Having all sufficiency in all things. Something is going to happen to somebody there today. Miracle going to come upon you today. Because all things in this hall, there will be hallelujah there. All two and three will be praising the Lord. All four, something is happening there. Five, six, and seven. Power is coming your way. All those who are outside, sufficiency in all things. Now in Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 13. I can. I can. I can. Look at the dictionary of your life and cancel impossibility out of that dictionary. Look at the book of your life and cancel, I cannot cancel it from your life. You can. I said you can. You will climb every mountain. You will do everything God has ordained for you to do. Your tears are wiped away. Your sorrow is gone. Impossibility is cancelled. Weakness. Not having a backbone. Not able to stand. The courage from heaven is entering your soul right now. Shout, I can. I can do. I can do. How many things here? Underline those words All things I can do all things through Christ Who strengthens me How does that happen? How will it happen in your life? That every prayer you pray tonight That God is going to answer How will it happen in your life? That all those you've been struggling to get Now you're going to get tonight how will it happen? The things I've been fasting for. The things I've been praying for. The things I've gone here and there for. And I didn't get them. And tonight is the night of the open door. Tonight is the night of opportunity. Tonight is the night of strength. Tonight is the night of power. Tonight you'll discover a new energy a new strength a new power a new vision a new ability and a new seal a new focus 
and then you today you begin to run the race the lord has set before you you will not fail somebody there said you will not fail you will not fall you will not falter because now you can do all things through christ who strengthens you strength is coming from above today I'm coming back to 2 Corinthians chapter 9. I'm talking to you tonight on the sufficiency of God's grace for you. The sufficiency of God's grace for you. You're a minister of the gospel. You're a preacher of the word of God. You're an evangelist. You are a preacher, a pastor, a leader, an overseer. The sufficiency of God's grace for you. You are a witness for Christ. You are a soul winner. And you are a worker. And you have an assignment before you. The sufficiency of God's grace for you. You are leading the children. You're leading the youths. You're leading the women. You're leading the language church. And you have been facing some challenges. And it's like you want to pack your baggage. You want to throw off the responsibility. How can I do this? I'm telling you tonight. The sufficiency of God's grace for you. You are a servant of God. You are a steward of God. You are a saint of God. You are seeking soul. Maybe you, need, you don't even know the Lord yet. But have a good intention. You know there is a God in heaven that is going to bless you. That's why you came tonight. You will not be disappointed. For the minister, for the member, for the man, for the invitee, we invited you here. God will do good in your life. The sufficiency of God's grace for me. Say that. The sufficiency of God's grace for me. The grace of God will carry you through. Don't give up. Don't give up. The journey is just starting. Don't give up. Something good is before you. Don't give up. Your miracle has come. And God is sufficient. And God is powerful. It tells us when we're talking about grace. Grace for all ministers. Grace for all members. Grace for all men. It's grace for every need. It's grace in every situation. It's grace in every trial. It's grace in every temptation. It's grace for every challenge of your life. It is grace in every condition of life. It is grace for anything you face. There is initial grace. You are just coming today. And there's something, an initial deposit in your life. You cannot visit the house of God and go back empty and dead. Even our friends, even our neighbors. I'm visiting that house for the first time. And I say, good morning. Oh, and they say, good morning. And they welcome me to enter. You know what? They'll give me a cup of water to drink. If human beings can do that. And you are coming for the first time today. Initial grace will enter into your life. But you know what? You know what? When they give me that cup of water, I receive. Tonight you will receive. What God is giving to you, receive in Jesus' name. Number one, there is initial grace. Number two, increasing grace. 
you will go from grace to grace from mercy to mercy from compassion to compassion from love to love you go into the grace of God increasing grace number three inexhaustible grace you see you get saved initial grace you move on you get sanctified increasing grace you're filled and dwelt by the Holy Ghost and the grace is still coming in accessible grace you become a servant of God like Paul the Apostle and God said my grace is sufficient for you inexhaustible grace grace comes upon your life I said grace comes upon your life saving grace sanctifying grace sustaining grace sufficient grace super abundant grace uh, you know something grace does not travel alone when grace comes something else is coming your way the bible talks of grace and peace it'll give peace to your soul peace in your family that fire that is burning in your home tonight that fire will go down grace and love because when grace comes it comes by love love is the engine that drives that grace into your life for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life grace and mercy read your bible you'll find grace and peace grace and love and grace and mercy the Lord will have mercy on you. He will have mercy on you and save your soul. Have mercy on you and heal your body. Have mercy on you and carry your body. And do great important things in your life. Grace and forgiveness. It is not something we merit. It is what God gives us free of charge. There is forgiveness for the sinner. There is forgiveness for the son in the family. You, you need to understand. When you come into the kingdom, there's forgiveness. And he wipes all your sins away. As with children of God, there are times you do something. And you think, I shouldn't have done that. You feel guilty. You feel condemned. You are a child of God. How could I do that? How could I say that? How could I make a mess of my life like that? Remember initial grace. Remember increasing grace. Remember inexhaustible grace. Tonight, any guilt, any condemnation there the sonship from the, the forgiveness from the father to the child will come upon you in Jesus name and it's grace and righteousness that grace comes into our lives and then he makes us righteous grace and victory grace and triumph grace and dominion and then there's grace and glory grace and glory somebody there the glory of God will come upon your life tonight we came to look at God in a new perspective God the God of all possibilities and the God of all grace and the God of all power and the God who is going to bless everyone today I'm a candidate for blessing I said I'm a candidate for blessing. It will happen in Jesus' name. 
I'm going to examine this message in three perspectives. Number one, the provision of grace for all men. If you have been thinking, I pray, I never get an answer. Tonight you are going to get an answer. I'm looking for this, I never get it. Today you are going to get it. There's a provision of grace for all men. Number two, the possibilities of grace in members. Those who have come into the family of God. I'm a member of the church of the living God. I'm a member of the family of God. I know my sins are forgiven. I'm a child of God. I belong to the family. Well, you remember possibilities of grace for members. And now our ministers, our fathers and mothers in the Lord, the servants of God who are serving the Lord, there are challenges we carry. There are things we want to move. There's a vision we have. There's a calling we have. And we need the grace of God for that. Point number three, the power of grace in ministers. Number one, tell me number one. The provision of grace for all men. Are you a part of that all men? There's a provision for you. And tonight you will get it. All men. What kind of men? All kinds of men. Look at Romans chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 23. Romans chapter 3, verse 23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Look up here. You see, many people don't understand. When it says all have seen and come short of the glory of God. Why you see that all of us here in Nigeria, all of us here in Africa, why are we dark? Why are we black? You see, because you did something very bad. And you went and you plunged yourself into an ocean of charcoal. What have you done? You've done nothing now. Your daddy, your mommy, they were dark. Their daddy, their mommy, also dark. Their mommy and their daddy also dark in color. And it came from the first person that was dark in color. And so, as so upon. Then you became dark in color. That's how you were born. Why does it say all have seen and come short of the glory of God? Mm, somebody said, I don't tell a lie. I don't steal. I don't do this. I don't do that. I go my way gently. Listen, all have seen and come short of the glory of God. How? Adam and Eve sinned and came short of the glory of God. And their children, Cain and Abel, they inherited that dark color. And their children inherited that dark color. By nature, we inherited that sin. And because it was inside us, whatever is inside us will come out. You cannot have something inside you that will not eventually come out. Our first parents were sinners. They fell from the grace of God. They fell from the goodness of God. And their children, and their children, and their children's children, until it came to us, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Look at that child that was just born. When she wants to suck the mother, 
If a mother is not uh, quickly giving what she wants, it'll bite the mother. Who taught that child? It was inside her. And when she doesn't have her way, she wants to take this thing. And you're not giving to him in time. He cries and kicks and throws everything away. Who teaches him to be angry? It was inside him. And then, if he tastes something like sugar, and uh, mommy is not there, he will steal that sugar and put it in the mouth. Who taught him to do that? It was inside him. And mommy comes. What's that? What are you eating? Nothing. Your mouth is swollen. Something is inside your mouth. What is that? Nothing. You took that thing. No. Who taught that child? Nobody. That thing was inside him. Because we inherited that sin nature. Sinners by birth. Sinners by practice. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But thank God, grace is coming to us. Somebody there said, grace is coming to us. Look at verse 24. Be justified freely by his grace. Be justified freely by his grace. In that justification, there's forgiveness. In that justification, there is pardon. In that justification, there is salvation. In that justification, cleansing. Be justified by His grace. Through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. It is for all men. Thank God it is for you. Tonight, the Lord will call you. And say, I want to give you forgiveness. I want to give you grace. I want to give you salvation. Because you are a sinner. It's those who don't understand that to say, No, I'm not a sinner. It's like, You are an African. No, I'm not an African. Your color can tell, your appearance can tell, even the texture of your hair can tell. Your builds can tell. Everybody knows this is who you are. The angels know you are a sinner. God knows you are a sinner. Jesus knows you are a sinner. Your conscience knows you are a sinner. Your neighbors know you are a sinner. Come, he will give you grace. The provision of grace for all men is coming upon your life. What are you? It will come. Wonderful thing. That God will forgive every sin you ever committed since you were born into this world. Ephesians chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 8. For by grace are you saved through faith. By grace are you saved through faith that not of yourselves it is the gift of god grace is free it's a gift once you have to pay something for that it's no more a gift once you have to fast before you are forgiven it's no more a gift once you have to travel to River Jordan to go and drink the water of River Jordan, it's no more free. But where you are, you want forgiveness. Where you are, you want the grace of God. It is the gift of God. It is not by marriage. It is what he gives you free of charge that not of yourselves it is the gift of god not of words lest any man should boast not of words lest any man should boast titus chapter 2 
I'm reading from verse 11. Titus chapter 2. And I'm reading from verse 11. It says, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared unto all men. The grace of God that, have, that bringeth salvation has appeared unto how many people? All men. Look up here. The sun shines for everybody. And if you need to dry your clothes or dry anything, bring those clothes out. The water is flowing for everybody. If you want to drink and be refreshed, come to the water. The air we breathe to keep us alive is provided for everybody. And if you want to breathe, come and breathe. The grace of God has appeared unto all men. If you shut yourself inside darkness in the house, if you shut up yourself in a dungeon, if you shut up yourself in the prison of religion, there are some people they think that, well, grace, the grace of God appearing to everyone, ah, ah, I am here, I am over there, come out of that place and get the grace of God. Don't cheat yourself. This grace will give you salvation. The grace of God that brings salvation. When the grace of God comes to you, it brings salvation to you. He said, you accept you're a sinner? You own it up, you're a sinner? Yes, I know I'm a sinner. I cannot save myself. I believe Jesus died for me on the cross of Calvary. But there's no name given under heaven whereby anyone can be saved. But that salvation comes to you now. How will I have the salvation? Let me go and give money to the beggars before I have salvation. No, no. The grace of God is free. Let me go and rub with oil before I get salvation. No, the grace of God is free. Let me go and burn incense before I have salvation. The grace of God is free. Let me go and make an atonement before the gods before I have salvation. The grace of God is free. Tonight is coming your way. That salvation is coming to you tonight. All your sins will be forgiven. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared unto all men. Initial grace has appeared unto all men. Increasing grace has appeared unto all men. Inexhaustible grace has appeared unto all men. God has provided for all your needs. There are perceived needs. There are spiritual needs. You have material needs. You have family needs. You have physical needs. It's the grace of God. It is all of grace. And that free grace will bring abundance to your life tonight in Jesus' name. Salvation has come. Give me all your state, amen. Restoration has come. Look up here. There are some people, they cheat themselves. I pray you will not die in your need. The bad of people you don't know how to say amen. You will not die in your needs in Jesus' name. A boy is going for an exam. And he studied. Once he picks that pen, he will write everything and get a good grade. By carelessness, he lost his pen. 
and he's going to the exam hall and he doesn't have any pain he could easily tell daddy or mommy but shh, i cannot tell daddy daddy will say uh uh you lost that pain but daddy knows you are going for exam even if he's going to correct you he will give you the pain open your mouth and ask you had a bottle of water you had a bottle of water you are drinking to refresh yourself something happened you lost the bottle of water now you are thirsty you need water and some people are ashamed I don't want them to see that I was careless I lost my bottle of water open your mouth and ask there are some people that were saved before and now something happened secretly there you lost the joy of salvation you lost the peace of salvation you lost the victory of salvation he wants to restore it to you look at the prodigal son i will arise and go to my father and say father i am not worthy to be called your child make me one of the hired servants he wanted restoration what if he was ashamed what if he said i don't want anybody to know that i'm suffering here in the far country he arose and he came and forgiveness came and provision came there's restoration tonight i said there's restoration tonight i said lord i am sorry i lost that thing it's coming back forgiveness will come back joy will come back restoration for you tonight in jesus name victory it will come by grace healing it will come by grace uh, are you ashamed to call to come to god so that he will heal you dominion has come deliverance has come abundance has come you know what you're going to do a you ask you will ask because it's available for everyone tonight salvation is available restoration is available blessing is available ask be believe you will believe god cannot lie i said my god cannot lie somebody there god cannot lie whosoever shall call on the name of the lord shall be saved you are that you so ever tonight whosoever you'll get saved whosoever you'll get forgiven whosoever you'll get healed whosoever ask and believe see you will confirm you will confirm you will check yourself i have peace i have the saints my sins are forgiven the spirit of god is telling me i am the candidate for salvation you will confirm i am healed somebody there i am healed it will happen tonight number one is the provision for all men number two the possibilities of grace in members you see when we receive the grace of god and we get saved that's just the beginning something more is still about to come in your life possibilities what are the things that are possible well we know that all things are possible and it is by the grace of god let me just show you one by one acts of the apostles chapter 11 acts chapter 11 verse 21 and the hand of the lord was with them 
And a great number believed and turned to the Lord. You will turn to the Lord tonight. And through your life, many people will turn to the Lord. Then the tidings of this is came to the ears of the church which is at Jerusalem. And he sent forth Barnabas that he should go as far as Antioch. Look at verse 23. When he came and had seen the grace of God was glad. After tonight, those who look at you, they will see the grace of God and be glad. My dear sister, if your husband has been weeping over you because of a challenge you have, and it's a reproach to the family, after tonight, your husband will see the grace of God and be glad. My brother, your wife has been looking at you. Oh, you see, there's no job, there's no money, there's no food, there's no this, there's no that. The night has come. Your wife that has been complaining will see the grace of God in you and be glad. You yourself, when you see yourself tonight, you get up, you're strong, you walk like a soldier. You say, is it me? I said, is it me? Your blind eyes will open. Your limb legs will be strong. And that thing that is knocking your head, God will knock the hand of the devil away. You will see something in your life tonight. You'll see the grace of God in your life tonight. You'll be glad in Jesus' name. And then after that, he exhorted them that were purpose of heart, they should cleave and clinch unto the Lord. Let, let, let's come back to that Titus chapter 2. Titus chapter 2. I'm reading from that verse 11 again. It says, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared unto all men teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly laws we should live soberly and righteously and godly in this present world what are the possibilities of grace in our lives the sin that overcame you before after tonight you will overcome that sin when the grace comes into our lives you will live a righteous life it will be easy because God will change your nature he will take the nature that likes to sin he will give you the nature that likes to live in righteousness that's what the grace of God does when he comes into our lives and the grace of God will not leave us weak, powerless, anemic, as if we cannot do anything. The grace of God will make you strong, will make you stand against temptation and trial, teaching us that we deny ungodliness and worldly lust. We live soberly, righteously, and godly. In this present world, looking for that blessed hope. The grace of God will bring hope in your life. And then he goes on to say, the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity. He will redeem us from all iniquity. The possibilities of the grace of God. For all members, He redeems us from all iniquity. If you have been struggling and fighting, 
against this, against that, and you didn't have victory before, your day of victory is starting today. He will redeem you from all iniquity. He will take you out of all iniquity. He will cleanse you from all iniquity. He will rescue you from all iniquity. He'll say, that's a safe soul. Iniquity, get out of there. Iniquity, don't come near that place anymore. And then he will give you the power to say no. From today, you'll say no to Satan. You'll say no to temptation. You'll say no to your weakness. And when that thing comes and he says, do this and do that, and that's a bad thing. You say, I have graduated from that school. I am no more there. Somebody there, I am no more there. Somebody there, I am no more there. And then, when the devil came in the past, they have come, they have come, they have come. They want to pull me down. I don't know what I'm going to do. They force me to drink it. They force me to smoke it. They force me to do something. From today, power will come into your life. And no devil, no demon will be able to force you to do anything anymore. You will look at Satan, at the temptress, at the tempter in the face, and you say, for the first time, I tell you, no. Somebody show me how you are going to tell the devil no. All those smokers will come. Show me how you are, what you are going to tell them. All the gang members will come. They are into occultism. And they put this and this together. And they're inviting you. What are you going to tell them? And then the people that, you know, they want to plan evil uh, behind the door. And they are saying, come with us, come with us. And in the past, you used to go with them. What are you going to tell them now? No. Even your face will tell them no. Your standing will tell them no. Your posture will tell them no. And the words of your mouth will tell them no. Because now you are stronger than them. And greater you see that you see you. Who am I talking to now? I said greater you see that you see you. Than he that is in the world. You are victorious from tonight in Jesus' name. Look at the end of that verse. And purify unto himself a peculiar people, sealers of good works. A peculiar people. You know what grace does in our lives? Before grace came into your life, you are a common person. You are one of them. They push you here, they push you there. You are a common person. Before the grace of God came to you, you are as weak as every other person, as sinful as any other person, as poor as any other person, as a coward like any other person. Before the grace of God came to you, you were a failure like any other person. Watch it, watch it, watch it. Grace is coming. Open the door. Grace is coming. Welcome this. Grace is coming. Power is coming. Anointing is coming. Strength is coming. Authority is coming. Courage is coming. Open the door. Grace has entered. And now he leads you out of being a common person to a peculiar person. The way you stand, you're peculiar. What you believe, you're peculiar. Your understanding of the Bible is peculiar. The courage you have is peculiar. The stand you take is peculiar. To purify 
unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. I will never be the same again. I said, I will never be the same again. Grace comes to you and lifts you up. Grace comes to you and builds you up. Grace comes to you and it transforms your life. Grace comes to you and brings freedom to you. Grace comes to you and it brings greatness to you. Grace comes to you and brings holiness and godliness to you. Grace fills you, redeems you, and changes you, endures you with power, transforms your life, that you become now a peculiar person in the sight of the Lord. And tonight is that night. And grace also brings sanctification. It brings holiness. It will wash over the blood of Jesus Christ. Even on the inside of you, you will feel clean and pure and righteous. You say, praise the Lord, I got something extra today. I said you got something extra today. First Peter chapter 1. First Peter chapter 1. Initial grace brings salvation. Increasing grace brings holiness sanctification. Look, look at chapter 1 of First Peter. I'm reading from verse 14. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to your former lusts in your ignorance. So when you are common, you are ignorant. When you are common, you are weak. When you are common, you are cheap. When you are common, you are failing. When you are common, you just yielded to every lust and every temptation. But now somebody there, you're special. I said now you're special. Now you're peculiar. It says now you will not fashion yourself according to your former lusts. But I see which has called you is holy. So be ye holy. In all manner of conversation. So be ye holy in all manner of conversation. You know there are some people. They don't understand. They to be holy in all manner of conversation lifestyle. When they come to church. For that hours. For those hours of service. They appear holy. And gentle. Sit down there. Yes, bro. Stand up there. Yes, pastor. Go this way. Yes, sister. And then go that way. Yes, sir. In church. When they get outside that gate. Come here. It's me you are talking to like that. We are not in church anymore. Don't talk to me like that again. You don't understand. In all manner of conversation, everywhere, every time, so be ye holy. When you're talking to people in the church, that's a worker, and the worker said, we are the ushers here. Stand up from that place. Go to that place. Yes, brother. And then they go there. When they get back home, and then maybe it's daddy that said hey my boy he already knew what he's doing he will act as if he didn't hear his name Gabriel do not answer until daddy goes there did you hear I was calling you and then he will look up he will not even answer 
Okay, stand up. I go and do that. He cannot obey the daddy as he obeyed the usher in the church. Be ye holy only in the church. Outside there, outside the gate. Uh -uh. That thing has changed tonight. I said that thing will change tonight. So that in all manner of conversation, in all conditions of life, anywhere you find yourself, a child of God is a child of God everywhere. You will be holy. Somebody there said you'll be holy. It says in verse 16, because it is written, be ye holy for I am holy. Well, thank God your time has come. I said your time has come. It will make a change in your life. The grace of God has come in. I'm going to read this wonderful verse again. And it's in 2 Corinthians chapter... Uh, 2 Corinthians, I'm reading from chapter 9, verse 8. And the God, and God is able to make all grace abound toward you. We're going to make it personal. You read it after me. Are you ready over there? Outside, are you ready? Okay, read it after me. And God is able to make all grace happen toward me that I that I always have it always have it all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work it's confirmed in your life in Jesus name Now the power of grace in ministers, the power of grace in the worker, the power of grace in everyone that is called of God, whatever God has called you for, it will give you the grace to accomplish it. I said you will be an achiever. The work of your hand will prosper in Jesus' name. Pastor, you will prosper. Preacher, you will prosper. Overseer, you will prosper. Leaders, you will prosper. Those who are witnessing and winning so soul winners, you will prosper. The power of grace in ministers. Look at First Corinthians chapter 3. First Corinthians chapter 3. And here we're reading from verses 9 and 10. First Corinthians chapter 3. Reading from verse 9 and from verse 10. It says in verse 9, For we are laborers together with God. You are not alone. You are walking with God. God is walking with you. You are God's husbandry. You are God's building. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me. As a great, as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another builder thereon. But let every man take heed how he builds thereupon. Paul was talking as a minister, as a Christian leader, as an overseer, as a shepherd. And he said, All those things he did, he did by the grace of God. The work prospered in his hand by grace. 
the work in your hand will prosper. And it is the free grace of God that is coming to you. Look at chapter 15, verse 10. Chapter 15, verse 10. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. A writer, a writer, an author, by the grace of God, I am what I am. An evangelist, a soul winner, by the grace of God, I am what I am. A pastor, a shepherd, I am what I am, by the grace of God. Whatever work God has given you to do, it is by grace. When you are getting tired, when you are getting weary, don't say, I cannot do anything anymore. The load is too heavy. The challenge is too much. I don't know I'm going to achieve this and that. Remember, there is initial grace. When you started the work of God, you were happy and excited. You were energetic and empowered. And you run here and you run there. Now, if you are getting tired, initial grace appears to be drying out. There is increasing grace. Go back to God. Grace will be supplied. And tonight, the grace of God is coming more into our lives in Jesus' name. There is increasing grace. There is inexhaustible grace. For by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain. But I labored. But I labored. That means I preached. That means I traveled. That means I walked. That means I evangelized. I labored more abundantly than, them, than they all. Yet not I. Yet not I. But the grace of God which was with me. That grace is coming to you. Multiplied full today. You will not be tired. You will not be weary. You will not say this is too much. You will not say I cannot. I can. Somebody there, I can. I can do all things. I can do all things. I can do the work of an evangelist. I can do the work of a soul winner. I can do the work of a preacher. I can do the work of my profession. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He will strengthen you. Weakness will vanish away tonight. All the weariness will vanish away tonight. Look at this now in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. I'm reading to you from verse 9. And he said unto me, and he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee. Paul the apostle was having a challenge. Normally, Paul the apostle was very strong. But something that appeared stronger than him came upon him. And he said, I prayed. And I told the Lord, take this away from me. And God gave him an answer from heaven. Somebody there, an answer is coming for you. A solution is coming for your problem. The Almighty God said, my grace is sufficient for you. That load you thought was too heavy to carry, bend down it now my grace is sufficient for you that assignment you thought was too difficult and too tough to go through 
put your hand to the plow. Now you can do it in Jesus' name. My grace is sufficient for you. Greater grace is coming tonight. Mighty grace is coming tonight. As we pray, you'll find a new energy, a new strength, a new power, a new ability, a new courage. Are you there? I'm looking for the man I'm talking about. I'm looking for the woman I'm talking about. You are going to get it in Jesus' name. Acts of the Apostles, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 31. And when they had prayed, the place was shaking where they were assembled together. We're going to pray tonight. Are you getting ready? Every, everything shakeable will shake out of your life. All the foundations of your prison doors, everything will shake out today in Jesus' name. All the stronghold of the enemy, today is your day. It will be shaking away from your life in Jesus' name. Those prison doors will open. The window of heaven will open for you. When they had prayed, the place was shaking where they, where they were assembled together. And they were all filled. How many of them were filled? And they were all filled. How many of them were filled? And they were all filled. Somebody is receiving blessing tonight. Salvation tonight. Restoration tonight. Strength tonight. Power tonight. Courage tonight. Healing tonight. Deliverance tonight. And the world filled with the Holy Ghost. And they speak the word of God with boldness. 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 Anybody having need of greater boldness there? Greater courage there, greater authority there, greater power there, greater assurance there. Boldness. Shout it out. Tonight, as you come to the Lord, God will plant something inside your spirit. The courage of a conqueror. The boldness of a champion. The authority of a child of God. You will go out in the strength of the Lord. Why are you there? Let heaven see your hand. Let God see your hand. Authority. Power. Boldness. All that timidity. All that hiding. All that cringing. That spirit of a coward, I command you, go out in Jesus' name. The courage of a conqueror, the boldness of a champion, the spirit of the lion of the tribe of Judah, to come in your life in Jesus' name. In Basachi 3, in Basachi 3, and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace was upon them all. Great grace was upon them all. Great grace was upon them all. Upon them all. From today, great grace would be upon you. From today, great power will be in your life. A new strength to serve the Lord. A new strength to work for the Lord. The assignment God created you for. When God created you, He knew what He wanted you to do on earth. Tonight, you will come back to the source, to the origin. 
And then you are going to begin that work. Nobody will drown you out of the responsibility the Lord has given you. Over there, great grace. Are you there, great grace? I said, are you there, great grace? Are you ready? Initial grace. Increasing grace. Inexhaustible grace. It's bowed and eyes closed. Tonight is our night. The night of salvation. It's the night of forgiveness. It is the night of grace. It is the night of joy. It is the night of power. Tonight, your night has come. God wants to forgive you. Wherever you are, there is grace for all men. All have seen that come short of the glory of God. But be justified freely by the grace of God. Justified freely by the grace of God. Freedom. Salvation. Forgiveness. Pardon is coming now free of charge. And you want this forgiveness for all the sins you have committed since you were born. Christ offers it to you right now. Where are you? You raise up your hand. Outside, God wants to see your hand. Anywhere you are, God wants to see your hand. He wants to bring forgiveness to you. He wants to bring salvation to you. My brother, my sister, you need restoration? The Lord wants to restore you right now. You will raise up your hand anywhere you are. If you are raising up your hand, inside or outside, so that this grace for forgiveness will come to you. So that this grace for salvation will come to you. If you are raising up your hand, you will stand up. You say, here am I, Lord. Wonderful. Wonderful. Forgiveness is coming now. Wonderful. Salvation is coming now. Wonderful. The water of life. The bread of life. Eternal life is coming to you right now. The peace of God is coming to you right now. Anywhere you are, inside or outside, you raise up that hand. I need forgiveness. I need forgiveness. I need salvation. I need restoration. I failed in the past. I failed in the past. I sinned in the past. Lord, forgive me. You raise up your hand and you stand up. At the moment you do that, remember grace is free. It's a free gift of God. The forgiveness is free. The salvation is free. The restoration is free. The peace of mind is free. Raise up that hand and stand up. I say, Lord, I am here. Lord, I am here. Lord, I am here. He'll forgive you right now. While you are standing, tell the Lord. Say, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I went astray. I'm sorry I did evil. I'm sorry I did what I shouldn't have done. I am a sinner. But I believe Jesus is my Savior. I believe forgiveness is mine now. Because of grace, the free gift of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Or your state can do better than that. In Jesus' name we pray. Keep on standing. I'm going to pray with you now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you tonight that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I pray for all these who have come for your grace. The free gift of salvation. The free gift of forgiveness. The free gift of restoration. According to your love. According to your mercy. And your compassion. Forgive them in Jesus name. 
Let your spirit bear witness in their hearts. Their sins are forgiven. Give them the victory, O Lord. That from today, the things that made them to fail before, that thing will not continue their lives. Salvation, pardon, peace, reconciliation with God, and the righteousness of Christ to be given to them right now. I thank you because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name I pray. Give me another amen. The Lord has answered. Say, I am forgiven. I say it out now. I am forgiven. I am saved. Praise the Lord. Our counselors are near you there. And our counselors will very quickly attend to you. I call on our state overseer to help us during this counseling session. Pastor Fola be the state overseer. Praise the Lord. Okay, hallelujah. Your miracle has arrived. The healing is here right now. All those yokes are broken tonight in Jesus' name. Blind eyes will be opened. Deaf and dumb will speak and hear. The lame will rise up and walk. That tumor will vanish away. Cancer will be healed. All the attacks and afflictions of the devil are cancelled tonight. All you will do is to raise up your hand. And remember the healing is coming by grace. It is free of charge. Jesus purchased it for you on the cross of Calvary. He bore the pain, he bore the sickness, he bore all your shame. By his stripes you are healed. So as we pray, when you say amen, you say it with confidence. You say it with expectation. And then when you hear the final amen, you know it is finished. And you check up yourself. You will find your healing there. Are you ready now? Raise up that hand. Father, in Jesus' name, we bless your name tonight. You are the God of power, the God of all possibilities, and you are the God of promise. You are the God of all provision. You have given us all the provision, and you said we only need to ask. Lord, I'm coming on behalf of everyone here tonight. And I pray, Lord, heal them in Jesus' name. I pray, give them the miracle in Jesus' name. Destroy the works of the devil in Jesus' name. That mental problem, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. Madness be delivered in Jesus' name. Spirit of insanity come out in Jesus' name. I pray for those who are very swelling in their body. That tumor, I command you. Come out in Jesus' name. I command the elephant chances. Come out in Jesus' name. And that water bag in the head, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. Any kind of swelling in your body, Lord, touch them now. Deflate that thing now. Vanish away in Jesus' name. I pray for those who have any incurable disease. Cancer be healed in Jesus' name. 
Asthma be healed in Jesus' name. Asthma be healed in Jesus' name. And that typhoid be healed in Jesus' name. I pray for that anya to vanish away right now. The sword diabetes heal them in the Jesus' name. High blood pressure be healed in Jesus' name. HIV AIDS be healed in Jesus' name. Any kind of disease, any kind of infirmity, any kind of pain or sickness there, be healed in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for those who are deaf and dumb. May Lord touch those ears right now. Touch the tongues right now. Your tongue be loose in Jesus' name. Begin to hear. Begin to hear. Begin to speak. Lord, confirm it in Jesus' name. I pray for those who are blind. That dimness of sight to vanish away. Cataract to vanish away. Glucoma to vanish away. Blindness come out in Jesus' name. Lord, touch their eyes, open their eyes. Give them sight. Give them sight. Bright sight. Bright vision. Begin to see in Jesus' name. I pray for those who are lame. That paralysis, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. Short leg, go out in Jesus' name. Broken bones, join together in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for those who are withered in any part of their body. Be healed in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that everywhere now, there will be healing. Everywhere miracle. Everywhere signs and wonders. Lord, do it in Jesus' name. In all the halls. Outside the halls. Left, right, and center. At the back and far away. Miracle. Healing. Deliverance. Victory. Confirm it, O Lord. We thank you because I know you have done it. In Jesus' name I pray. It is done. I said it is done. Those blind eyes can be opened now and you begin to see. Those who are lame, you can rise up now and begin to walk. You brought anybody there for them, you can talk to them. They will hear, they will speak. Any soul in the body check up is gone. God has touched you. And when you see that miracle, you will shout out, praise the Lord. I will rejoice with you. Check up yourself. You have a testimony tonight. You have a testimony tonight. It is done. It is done. Amen. That lameness is gone. That blindness is gone. If you yet check up your body. It is done. Oh, to repair. Ushers. And your son. Cancellor. And your banana. Check up the people. And you will. Once you see done, bring them out. But you report to repair. And what that they want. Bring them the hall of meeting. And what was To the front of the hall. See what you bagan. Check up, check up. Yeah, what, yeah, what? Check up, check up. Yeah, what, yeah, what? What you cannot do before. Don't tell the settler. Start to do them now. Because you are healed. Because you are delivered. Because you are set free. The yoke is broken. Check up. Yeah, whoa. Check up. Yeah, whoa. Check up. Yeah, whoa. That thing is no more there. On to one better than your simbema. The pain is no more there. The roller your simbema. The deafness is gone. The yaditi law. The darkness is gone. It did it in law. Open your eyes and see. Now you rewa. Speak to their ear. A pound one sorrow. They are, they cannot hear. One le bobby. Your leg is straightened. The bones are joined together. The short leg is coming out. The tumor has disappeared. That brain tumor has gone. Check it, check it, check it. Check it, check it. 
And once you see it done, shout praise the Lord. Oh, but you report you rebel, near bank, hallelujah. We are waiting. And do we want to hear your testimony. You want to see the first person to testify tonight. From outside. From inside. From all the halls. Yes, it's happening in Hall 1. Check yourself. Hall 2. Hall 3. Hall 4. Hall 5. Hall 6. It is done. I cancel not check up on them. And bring them out. To the front of the all the halls. And in the space between the halls. We want to hear your testimony. Shout of hallelujah. Hallelujah. Outside the hall. Inside the hall. Shout of Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is done. Amen. Amen. It's happening in hall four out. Hall five. Check it. Check it. Don't just be somebody a spectator. Be a participant. You wanna be a love Be a testifier. Then it's your jerry. You are not going home without problem. Oh, ne be wa la ye lolly. You're not going without challenge. Oh, ne lolly pa lu pe ni jare. You want to hear the good thing the Lord has done in your life. A fair bo orere. Yes, bring them forward. Our leaders as. Region of Asia group leaders, please let's come out and interview them. From outside, bring them inside. Once you have received your miracle, shout hallelujah. Yes, bring him out, bring oh, yeah. her out. What you cannot do before, start to do it now. Yes, bring them out, bring them out, bring them hey. out. We are waiting for you. And do you. Leaders, region of Asias, group pastors, let's come out and interview the people. And let's see less spectacular miracle. You want to hear what the Lord has done here tonight. Yes, please. Come out, come out, come out. Yes, it's happening all two over there. Bring them out. Bring them to the Bring them to the front of the hall. And put them to hall five. In the front of hall five. Brethren, leaders, let's please hurry up in, to do the interview so that you can hear the, those testimonies. Check up yourself wherever you are. Don't be an onlooker. Your miracle is already there. God has done, yes, I can hear some jubilation outside there. Bring them in, bring them in. This is your day. day of jubilation. A day of dominion. A day of healing. A day of A day of deliverance. It is done already. Exercise yourself. Check up yourself. Find out. Say what? 
those things you cannot do before. Start to do it. Stretch for that hand. Stretch for that leg. You are healed. You are delivered. Where are you? Come out. Please let's light the people up. A group leaders and regional overseer, please let's do quickly. It is done. It is finished. You are healed. At Check it up. Open your eyes and see. Laujure Speak to their ear, they are going to hear. Stretch for your hand. The wither hand is healed. Now Stretch your legs, the legs are healed. Check your tummy. Those things are gone. The swollen part is that disappeared. We are waiting. And Yes, are we ready? See at this setup. Check up, check up, check up. Yeah, wo, yeah, wo, yeah, wo. Check up, check up, check up. Yeah, wo, yeah, wo. It is done. Oh, the repair. The miracle is there. He said, "Yeah, no, yeah, wo, be." You are healed. At the worst, you are delivered. At the down, need day. Let's interview them. Check up your body wherever you are outside, inside. Cancel up, bring them out. Immediately you see it is done. It's already done. It's already done. Yes, come to Hall 5. Check up. Yeah, Check up. Hey, yeah, and shout praise the Lord. Okay, okay. Yes, it's happening all four. Ah, oh, tinsel, Bring them out. Hey, Your miracle is there. He said, "Ya no, they want bear. Bring them out. Emu wa jade wa. You are the next to testify. You want learn it here? You can. Check those your blocks. Because the miracle is there already. I want you You need you don't need that churches again. The Lord has healed you. what you Yes, all four bring them out. He's healed. He's is delivered. She's free. Ati tu sile. She's delivered. Ati tu oberin ya sile. A brother coordinating the testimony. Can we have the testifiers? Anya ara kone wati o se aposo eri. Anya ki ane awato fe jeri bai. Your miracle is there. He said, "Ya no re wa mbe." Your miracle is there. He said, "Ya no re wa mbe." Test yourself. Ya ra re wo. Examine yourself. Ya ra re wo da da. Look at it again. You want to ye wo? It is gone. Oti lo. The problem is over. Wa la ni ti do pe. You are healed. Ati mu ala ra da. You are delivered. Ati da oni de.
check yourself outside the hall under the tents on the main feed counselors bring them in please bring them in can we have the false testimony Yes. Your name? Where are you came from? What happened to you? Praise the Lord. It is time for testimonies. The power of God has moved and is moving in the camp. It has moved and is moving in the camp. The Lord has delivered some people. The Lord has wrought great miracles for some people. And we want to hear what the Lord has done. Here is the first testifier. Uh, what's your kilo recording? Let's see what. Let's see what. Let's see what. Let's see what. Tony accident. Only accident in Dueco. So, when Batima won no phone way, in the one film paper go in a to one bed. So, man, in say, and we pay. Oh, my yo, let's sorrow. Beauty, name man say. In Bato, Tom, or do matter, Nimoti at all, for a week for sorrow. My one in bed, I see you see it. But what bed or you see it? I want doctor, ni ni bati yare, to fill accident, to siku, to se kuya bama leni ni. Oh man, fa koma le man sorrow, to man ba wa do duoro. Oh le man sorrow, oh si man ba eti wi, ki mo la si na sri school. Ma wa mo la na sri school, oh se bi adu me tambe ngori di pada. Ni bato ni mo la si aye ni ni ki mo la si to di. Kilo <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> O de ti be o iya e ti kula to mo su mo kan la o give a round of applause to Jesus give up a round of applause to Jesus the lord has done it again elemalo elemalo this boy you are looking at is about 10 years of 10 years of age at the age of 11 month the mother had an accident while the boy was 11 month old and when the mother had an accident from that time till this moment, he could not hear and he could not speak. But tonight, while the man of God was praying, the power of God descended upon him, opened the ears, loosed the tongue, and you could hear him speak. A round of applause for Jesus. He will. He has. He has. Start, he has. We have just started. Another testifier. Another testifier. The Lord has done all things well. 
Yes. Your name, where you came from. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. My name is uh, Sister Alalade Temitayo. And my daughter's name is uh, Mofi Folu Alalade. It happens that about three years ago now, precisely the time there, there is uh, Ebola. Uh, she was betting. Then she just came and told me, she said, Mommy, I have a swelling at the upper, uh, lower part of my abdomen here. By the time I checked it, I took her to a doctor. The doctor checked it. She said, ah, this is Ania. I said, where can she see it? Anyway, we started praying over it. I took her to the uh, general hospital at uh, Oyo. They said she's going to be operated. I said, I reject it in Jesus' name. So when we were now coming for this program, we wanted to have a, a quiet time yesterday morning. I just told her, I said, see, I'm, I'm, I'm not supposed to take you for a leader's meeting like this because uh, you, it's meant for leader. But I'm taking all of you. Just let's pray. This problem will not come back with us. So we agreed, we pray. Then when we came here, I said, just lay your hands upon it. But you see, that's it, Thomas. I've already taken all our card and everything. I put it inside the car. I said, after, the, the, after living here, we are going to Ibadan. I will take her to UCH in Ibadan so that they can uh, diagnose it. But my mind tells me, you will not go to UCH. You will go to Ibadan for something else. What happened to her? Sitting down at the information center there. She just came. She said, ah, mommy. She said, that thing has disappeared, though. I said, how do you know? She said before the, the GS message that she touched it, it was there. But that after the GS message prayer, after the prayer, she just touched it. She couldn't find it there again. And, and she will never find it again. Amen. Wait, 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 wait. Eja can want to buy you, Barry. Eke, hallelujah. Arabian Alala de one more ti jerry or my automodumelo or more do more can la only Latin can be or do meta say Nikinikan Wuro Boto, see Sale Kue. Low off in her mamma, eh, while Wokinika to Wuro Boto, see Sale Kuong, but you want more lossy lay was a one e pakini e pakke, Boloti ferry, Mosha, basic business on. So, ba, come a day in a penu, but you want debil a lay, or my bernie, any pay, own fear walk on, only go sim be, a holo one bernie back onto berry wasu, only so ba, lay it to you wasu, parity walk back dua, lay your soccer, if it all woo, oh, bora, eke, hallelujah, my lola lafia. The next testifier. Check yourself anywhere you are. The miracle is there. Still, yara, they will never give you to you will testify here tonight. Eba mi na, eba mi na. Oka ya so Enna, aha, enna. Oka ya uto kalema. Your name. And where you came from, then your testimony. Praise the Lord! By the grace of God, I am Brother Stephen Elam from Olodo Group of Districts. Uh, I am saved some years ago by the grace of God, and uh, I'm still uh, uh, following the Lord. So, March last year, I have an accident. It was a vehicle that uh, hit me on top of the Okada. So this right leg got broken and uh, I was taken to the hospital for uh, treatment. So they, I, they put uh, a POP. So I was at home for many uh, months. In fact, I think it's over a year now. So I have not been able to walk freely without the, these uh, uh, crutches. But by the grace of God, this night, as our Father in the Lord is ministering and praying, I just hear the kind of change and noise in my knee here. So I became somehow... At the word, yes, I became somehow very weak, that I have to sit down. Then the brethren said, I should uh, take courage to stand and begin to march. Then they took these crutches away from me. And that is how the Lord gave me victory over it in the name of Jesus. Eke, hallelujah. SMA Dilolo Ndafuwa. 
Sogbon ijamba lo so e lo mu ese keta wa won ni jamba lori okada ni nkan bi odun kan seyin nigba yin igunkun ese won o fo won ba won to won de ba won de fun opolopo osu fun bi odun kan ni won fi wa nle ti won o le jade sugbon won wa lale yi pelu ese keta olorun ti gba ese keta kuro nbe o ti da pada si ese meji to da sibe olorun ti gba opa lowo won o ti wu ese yen san won ni bon ti ngba dura awon bo ti ese yen ro kokokoko awon la gun wa o de re awon awon ba joko awon araba ni dide fi gbagbo re soju se bi awon na de se dide ese ti o se gbe tele ori gende ni ta la ro kutukutu to nlo mo do o lara o lebi ara le abi o le atewo jesus da clap offering for jesus alafia